Red Foundry proudly brings you this issue of the Science Screen Report. The nation's leading independent foundry has been a growing part of the Lynchburg community since 1896. We manufacture quality engineered castings using 2800 degree molten iron and automated equipment to shape intricate parts. Chemical and physical analysis form the backbone of Lynchburg's quality control program. Precision castings are used in a variety of industrial and consumer products. Experience, technology, quality, and the Foundry's greatest asset, people, have combined to make Lynchburg Foundry the leader in its field. And now, the Science Screen Report. The Science Screen Report. Developments in science, engineering, and medicine that help solve the problems of modern life. Michael Faraday, physicist, 1791 to 1867. From his simple laboratory came discoveries that were the basis of today's electronics. James Clerk Maxwell, physicist, 1831 to 1879, discovered basic laws of electromagnetism. Of no use in his time, his work ultimately set the stage for all of today's communications technology. George Boole, mathematician, 1815 to 1879, created a symbolic system to record logical thought, a pure idea which in this century led to the modern computer. These three scientists' basic research was carried out because of their thirst for knowledge. Within a century, what they found reshaped the world. blazing today's research trails, accumulating the basic knowledge that will be needed tomorrow. One such researcher is Robert Ballard of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. His curiosity about how the seabed was formed led him to investigate one of the deepest underwater canyons, the Cayman Trough in the Caribbean Sea. The past 15 years have seen a revolution in our concept of the Earth's crust. This revolution, known as the theory of plate tectonics, says that the continents are being pushed apart by forces beneath the sea floor. It tells us that the tremendous heat trying to escape from the interior of our Earth splits the crust into huge floating plates. Our continents are part of these drifting plates, floating like ice packs on a restless sea. A variety of different kinds of scientific measurements support this view but we wanted to find some direct evidence. So he descended in a bathyscaphe to a depth of eight kilometers. When we dove into the Cayman Trough, we entered the tear itself for the first time. It was a thrilling and frightening moment. We were fascinated to find the twisted cylinders of lava scattered all over the landscape. Into the crust that has been torn open, molten rock flows, rising up from the depths. Here's what happens when this kind of volcanic activity erupts underwater, and when lava pillows are formed. This particular footage was shot in the shallow waters off Hawaii. The 
sounds you are hearing are those of underwater volcanic activity. In the Cayman Trough, this is caused by the separation of plates. It is the sound of the Earth itself, the echoes of creation. By knowing how the continents move, we may get a better idea of where to look for new oil deposits and minerals. The plate tectonics theory affects our lives in another way. For when the immense sliding plates collide and grind against each other, earthquakes may occur. At the San Andreas Fault in California, two colliding plates are under study. The land around the fault is moving steadily at the rate of 64 centimeters, or about two inches per year. If this fault should slip, the results could be disastrous for millions of people. Seismic activity checks out. How about uh, the Cobb Mountain 680? Yeah, I'll dial, I'll plug These in. experts are measuring some of the energy buildup in the fault so that perhaps someday they may be able to predict when it will slip again. Close to the ocean. Only four of them are transmitting. But these, this one here looks really good. A different area of research concerns the ocean of air in which we live. The man who sent this research balloon aloft to probe that ocean is Dr. David Mercray of the University of Denver. If you were to ride this balloon up through the sky, you'd notice the air gradually getting colder. But around 15 kilometers up, the temperature levels off. At that altitude, the stratosphere begins. There is located the ozone layer. This thin layer of gas shields us from the burning, cancer-producing ultraviolet rays shot out from the sun. For years, we have been studying how the ozone layer is formed since it shields us from these deadly rays. How did the data look? Those studies proved most opportune, for other experts had come upon a new and potentially deadly problem. Was it possible, they wondered, that man-made substances could be destroying the protective ozone layer? That could be serious, for only a 5% depletion in the ozone could trigger a worldwide increase in skin cancer. We had to know. That's when balloon research started to pay off. The scientists already knew what to do. They sent up more high-altitude balloons loaded with detection equipment and began collecting additional data. Here, take a look at this. The balloon's gondola is right smack in the middle of the ozone layer. And these peaks, these peaks are due to man-made fluorocarbons right up there with it, definitely infiltrating the stratosphere. We had our first answer. But all the answers aren't in yet. It is possible that the ozone layer may remain intact through some mechanism we do not understand. Or it may someday be dangerously depleted by the substances we've allowed to enter it. It's funny, you know, when we first started wondering about the basic chemical reactions occurring in the stratosphere, it all seemed so esoteric. Only the government, the National Science Foundation, gave us any support and encouragement. Now it could turn out to be crucial to the health and safety of our nation. You couldn't have known it back then, could you? Still another scientific research project concerned with the life of a simple fern may have a critical application to the world food shortage. One major food source is rice. A key problem in growing more and better rice is fertilizer. Today, chemical fertilizers replace depleted soil nitrogen. But such fertilizers must be manufactured out of expensive natural resources. For this reason, experts like Ray Valentine at the University of California at Davis 
are investigating plants that convert nitrogen in the air to soil nitrates. They want to understand this process so that it can be more widely applied. In basic research, you never know where the leads may come from. This little fern is called a zola. It has lived this way for millions and millions of years. A microscopic blue-green algae lives with it. Now we're studying this little fern. It has a real genius for plucking nitrogen from the air and enriching the soil with it. Just look at this rice. Notice how much taller the rice is with the zola than the rice without. The question is, how does it do it? That's what we're trying to find out here. If scientists can learn more about the azola, it can be grown cheaper and in greater quantity. It might even be possible to introduce azola's algae into other food plants. If this type of basic research is successful, then food production around the world might be revolutionized. One more basic research area is laser chemistry, probing the molecule with one of science's newest, most versatile tools. Lasers are unique in that they produce a very fine beam of only one frequency or color. The laser, strong enough to punch a hole in a rock, or gentle enough to treat a diseased eye. A laser beam can also reach into the minute world of rapidly changing chemical processes, even a flame. Although application of lasers to chemistry has just begun, they are already being used by Dr. Robin Hochstrasser of the University of Pennsylvania to learn more about the scientific phenomenon called coherence. Well, we put that aside in order to do this experiment. So this is a one pulse prepares the system, one pulse does something to it, the third pulse causes it to fluoresce or not fluoresce, right? right. And so it works quite well. We're using a laser here to create a coherent effect in this liquid nitrogen. When a substance is in a coherent state, it can carry and transmit energy with little or no loss, such as in a superconductor. It's rare to find this state in nature, and chemists are interested in it because it tells them more about the fundamental nature of the interactions between the molecules that they study. In our experiment, we know we will have achieved coherence in this liquid when a blue beam goes in and a beam of another color comes out. Is everybody ready? Turn off the lights, please. Fire the laser. The blue beam changes to greenish yellow because the blue beam has transferred some of its energy into the liquid. The power of the blue beam has forced the molecules into a strict pattern. Coherence has been achieved. Understanding coherence has produced the key to transmitting huge amounts of power with very little loss of energy, something we desperately need. Laser-induced chemistry may soon create new materials, synthesize new drugs, better harness energy, and give us insights into the nature of living things. Still other basic research is underway. At these hot springs, scientists have found a previously unknown form of life, living on hydrogen and carbon dioxide, of still unknown potentials. Where will the search for new knowledge lead us? History suggests that its future impact may dwarf even our most daring speculations. Lynchburg Foundry has been proud to bring you this issue of the Science Screen Report to further your understanding of science, engineering, medicine, and technology.